Hello, welcome. This is my project about the round-tailed ground squirrels out here at Polytech ASU. And my name is Brandon McDowell, and we're going to be talking about the chirping behavior or the chirping noises they make that are commonly referred to as their alarm calls. That chirping or high-pitched squeak sound they either emit inside their burrow when you can't see them if the predator's close, or they do it outside the burrow. And what they'll do is either stick their head out or they'll stand up completely so they get a better view of what's going on. And then one of the individuals will chirp and then wait for a response. And then other individuals will join in, as you can see and hear in the video, um, responding to let people know like where the predator is, it's getting close, and as a predator gets closer, the people far away will chirp and the people close will stop so the predators know exactly where they are. Now we're going to take a pause from watching the actual animal behavior and talk about the hypotheses of why the animals behave the way that they do. So for causation, environmental was the subcategory I chose because they're forced to live in clumped areas as smaller family groups because uh, resources in the desert, and that in turn attracts predators, so there has to be a good way to save themselves from being killed by the predator. So my hypothesis for developmental was that it's a learned behavior, and according to a study done by Matteo and Associates, the, during a lab test and in the field, they found that as the amount of the exposure to the stimulus of chirping increased, the reaction time, or the running to the burrow, also increased. So the more they heard the sound, the more likely they were to run to protect themselves, even from a young age. For the evolutionary hypothesis, it has to do with kin selection and parental care. There are some back and forth arguments in the scientific community about if it's really only about kin selection, because sometimes they have found that they're not always related, but they still do alarm calls. But obviously, if an individual is doing an alarm call that benefits its close genetic relatives, then those relatives are going to live to pass on their genes and so on and so forth. That trait is passed down. For the functional hypothesis, it is for predator avoidance. So these alarm calls are used when they see either a land or a terrestrial predator, and they have different calls for each. And when the other individuals in the group hear the call, they know to run to their burrows and either stay close to it or to go in, depending on how far away the predator is. So to conclude, just some vocabulary connections. We have, this is an example of an auditory predatory defense. So they notify others with the sound that a predator is nearby. It's also an example of cooperation and altruism because they're working together as a group. And it's altruism because the person who's making the sound, kind of the predator's kind of attracted towards that sound. So they're kind of put in danger, but the other people benefit in the group. And then they kind of take turns. So when the predator is nearby, that person will stop making the sound and the people far away will in turn make that sound and then they take turns of the predator switches locations and with that that concludes my animal behavior video thank you for watching and listening